Hello all and welcome to a brand new talk show, The Big Story, where we discuss the hottest topics of the day right here in the heart of the newsroom. I'm Harianto coming to you live from The Straits Times. Now we are streaming to you on Facebook as well as on YouTube, so be sure to like and comment and share as well. Now while you're at it, also make sure to hit the bell to be alerted of the videos that we have right here. Now I'll have my newsroom colleagues joining me in this show to talk about the stories that got you talking today. Now, in our first segment, in his two-hour-long speech in Parliament yesterday, Home Affairs and Law Minister K. Shanmugam presented the Protection from Online Falsehood and Manipulation Bill and set out the rationale for the proposed law. Under the bill, a minister decides whether to act against a piece of falsehood on the internet and can order that it be taken down or ask for corrections to be put up alongside it. I have with me Defence and Security Editor Ko Kian Bing to talk more about this. Welcome, Kian Bing. Now, Kian Bing, you know what stood out the most for you in uh, Minister's uh, speech yesterday? So, since the bill was mm. uh, first uh, unveiled in April, uh, Minister Shamugam has, uh, and also the very other ministers, have spoken about why Singapore needs this new law, mm. why it has been structured the way it is by giving ministers the power first to decide on the falsehood and how to tackle it. And, and the avenues for redress. And, but yesterday was probably the most um, robust uh, articulation by Minister Shamugam mm. in, in explaining why Singapore needs this law. Yeah. And he went into a, in the, in a more philosophical direction in saying yeah. that it's not just about tackling falsehoods, yeah. but also to prevent the erosion of trust in public institutions that, that can be seen and witnessed in many other countries. Uh, and, and this erosion of trust uh, if not tackled, could lead to the rise of populism mm. that could you know, affect Singapore's political stability. Yeah. So it was interesting in that sense. And yeah. also, since the bill was first unveiled, there has been a lot mm. of concern you know, from segments of society yeah. over uh, the structures of the bill. So, and also whether you know, it will be too costly and too difficult yeah. for individuals who are aggrieved to seek redress. And so yesterday we heard from Mr. Minister Shamugan yeah. on you know, key uh, uh, details on the timelines in which a minister has to respond to complaints yeah. or appeals against his orders. Mm. So they, they, those were the two uh, key highlights of his speech. Yeah. For you, yeah? Now the bill more than a uh, year in the making since public consultation started in January last year is one of the most scrutinised pieces of legislation in recent years. Now, Kambing, why is this bill significant? I think I, you know, there are several reasons. Mm. One is, of course, you know, we, we all it's widely recognise that you know, the rise of online falsehoods is a real scourge that Singapore and many other countries need to tackle. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's also this fear among many that whether you know, the, the use of legislation, how that would impact uh, the freedom of speech or expression yeah. that many consider as fundamental, fundamental liberty. Yeah. Also, Singapore, so also, the way Singapore approaches this is, yeah. is keenly watched because you know, Singapore is known to, to do things in the, its own way, the Singapore way, the yeah. uniquely Singapore way. So, and true enough, the bill, if you look at it, uh, it has been touted as one of the most uh, more novel ones uh, yeah. compared to those in other countries because it, it doesn't just offer uh, take-down orders. Yeah. Uh, it also allows the ministers a suite of, uh, of uh, directions or orders yeah. they can take from corrections to take down to, of course, more extreme, like blocking the entire websites. Yeah. And this tiered approach is, is, is unique in its sense. Yeah. And also, uh, because it is based on this premise that uh, falsehoods travel more uh, further and has wider reach than, than corrections. So if you just take down something, you know, the correct, or you issue, you may not, the correction itself may not reach the, the audience who had already consumed the falsehoods. Right. And of course, uh, the Workers' Party opposes the proposed fake news law now on the grounds that ministers should not be the deciding body on what constitutes false matters. More on that, Kambing. So yesterday, uh, Workers' Party uh, uh, leader Pritam Singh and, and also his former leader, Mr. Lau Tia Kiang, uh, spoke during the debate and they, they both stated that the party has ob uh, objected to the bill mm -hmm. on various, re uh, various reasons. One is because um, 
Mr. Pritam Singh said that you know there's this perception, public perception that you know giving the ministers the power to decide yeah. uh, may be, be be unfair because they they might act in a partisan way. So yeah. it's best it's better to turn it to have these powers be you know uh, move to the court so that it can legitimize the orders or the actions against the force. Mm -hmm. Also because he referred to another law, you know, yeah. Protection for Harassment Act, yeah. where uh, individuals and Organizations were aggrieved or, or by online falsehoods has to turn to the court. So he said, for parity's sake, for, for you know to be yeah. fairer, the government also should surrender itself to such mm. processes. Mm. Mr. Lau mentions you know uh, cite a few factors. Uh, yeah. The key of which was that he he believes that he thinks that uh, whether something is fact or falsehood, you know, if left to the minister to decide, it can be a subjective matter. Yeah. You know what can be deem of uh, opinion might be deemed as a falsehood covered yeah. under the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, definitely the debate continues today as members of parliament seek to get more clarifications on the bill. Now, for more updates on this proposed fake news law, do head over to www.straightstimes.com. Thank you once again, Kambi, you know, for being on the show today to talk more on this proposed uh, fake news law. Now, on to our second segment. As the saying goes, if you can't beat them, Join them. Taxi giant Comfort Delgro is joining the free with a planned rollout of non-metered fares. Now, the trial is set to start from 15 May. The cab operator will also open its taxi booking app to private hire drivers. To talk more about this, I have with me Senior Transport Correspondent Christopher Tan. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Chris, uh, why did Comfort Delgro finally decide to implement the dynamic fare system? Is it a little too late, you reckon? I think uh, when they first started uh, considering moving into this area, mm. it was with Uber. Yeah. If you recall, uh, they wanted to partner with Uber. They, booked, they decided to acquire a whole fleet of Uber cars. Yeah. Uh, but then, all of a sudden, Uber decided to pull, pull out, out Southeast yeah. Asia, and there goes the deal. Mm. Uh, well, it's taken them about uh, 12, 18 months or so yeah. to finally come to this stage. Yeah to decide to do it on their own. Yeah. So, I mean, one way to go into the private hire uh, segment was to buy your own cars, mm. start up your own fleet, mm. but that's fairly expensive. Yeah. With the changes in laws, uh, competition laws and such, and um, also with the Public Transport Council and the Land Transport Authority saying that, you know, we want to ensure contestability, yeah. so everybody is free to use whatever apps there's no tie down, there's no exclusivity yeah. clauses. You don't really need to start a fleet. Mm. You don't need, really need to be asset heavy and yeah. have your own fleet of cars. Yeah. You can just open it up mm. to your app yeah. to whoever wishes to use it. To use it right. So that's, mm. that's, what, that's exactly what they've done. Mm. And Chris, you know, how do you think uh, with this move from uh, Comfort Delgro, right, it will affect the private hire car sector, you know, especially with Grab and Gojek in the mix as well? I think uh, competition will, 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 will rise. Yeah. Um, drivers will choose the best platform yeah. which suits their driving habits. Yeah. And as for commuters, uh, likewise for commuters, they will choose the best one that suits. Uh, mm. And I, I would imagine the commuters will choose according to price. Yeah. 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 And you reckon that commuters will stand to gain from all this? Well, I think competition would definitely be good for uh, end users, yeah. but the trouble, uh, the worry here is that if the entire industry moves to dynamic, dynamic pricing, yeah. which is the uh, premise of all this uh, change that yeah. we see, um, dynamic pr pricing is a bit opaque. Mm. And the opaqueness of it is, is what uh, is a bit worrying because yeah. for taxi fares, everything is spelled out, right? Yeah. It's, it's regulated, it's well yeah. regulated, it's well communicated. Yeah. You see the signs on your yeah. taxi windows and the, 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 the seat uh, yeah. backrests, and you are able to, you, are, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. But whereas for dynamic pricing, you just have to trust the algorithm, mm -hmm. right? And the algorithm is held very closely, uh, very tightly by the, uh, by the operators. Yeah. And they are not open for regulations. For regulation. right? mm. So who, who are we to say that uh, mm. this time of day, yeah. this part of town, yeah. Uh, your fares go up by five times or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it becomes very opaque, yeah. and that's that's the worry that and it's going down. If everything goes down that way, yeah. then um, I think commuters may 
uh, lose out right. in the end. In the end. Yeah. And just uh, to be clear, even with this uh, new dynamic pricing, mm -hmm. the metered fares will still continue. Yes. There's also that metered fares, right? So I think uh, that's what they're saying uh, for yeah. the moment. I think uh, to ease people into this uh, new uh, platform, they're yeah. saying that they will retain the yeah. metered fares. But who knows? I mean, uh, if if drivers and if the industry is said to prefer one over mm. the other, mm. they, it may not make sense to have two different, two different yeah. uh, uh, set of uh, fares going yeah. on. It may be confusing. Yeah. So for the time being, yes, there, mm. there, there's still a choice for commuters. Yeah. And I suppose that's, uh, that's uh, comforting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Chris. And of course, uh, to read more on this uh, new trial that ComfortDelGro has uh, set out, uh, do head over to straightstimes.com to read on uh, Christopher's uh, piece on that. Thank you, Chris, thank for you. being here. Now, moving on to our third segment, Singapore's newest cinema will welcome its first ticketed audiences next week on May 18. Now, the Asian film archives uh, AFA, Oldham Theatre, will be a venue screening works from the Singapore International Festival of Arts Film Programme, Singular Screens, which runs from May 18 to June the 2nd. Now, I have with me film correspondent John Lui to talk more about this. Welcome, John. Hi, hi. <laughs> now, John, tell us more about this uh, space here, this uh, new theatre. Well, it's called the Oldham Theatre. It's mm. up on uh, Canning Rise, you know, that row where the Philatelic Museum yes, yes, National yes, yes. Archives, yeah. where the fire station is. Yeah, up Central Fire Station. Yeah, yeah. yeah Central Fire Station. Um, and it's going to have its first paying customers May 18th, which is a Saturday next week. Ah, okay, okay. And of course, uh, the AFA's regular screenings will kick off uh, with two films, right? One is the dark comedy, We Are Little Zombies. Uh, in 2019 from Japan and the coming of age drama House of Hummingbird from yeah. South Korea. Tell us more, John, about yeah. this. Well, now that they have their own space, they mm. can um, fulfill their mission better, which is to screen Asian films, yeah. both old and new. Yeah. And they, these two films, pretty interesting. One's a dark comedy mm. about four orphans who form a rock band. Yeah. And the other one's a, a gentle calming, coming of age film right. from South, Korea. From South yeah. Korea. Now we have a short clip of uh, We Are Little Zombies, so have a look. バンドエルゾ。キッズアオールライトですよ。マジなパターンですよこれ。そうか。このバンドはさ、僕らがゾンビが誕生を手に入れるための冒険なのかもしれない。せーの。ウィアー。リタルゾンビ。うん。ああ
that you have it. So that is House of Hummingbird from uh, Korea, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, John, uh, we talked about this and I asked you, what are your top two picks okay. from this? Yeah. Right. Um, there's a film coming up. Mm. It, it, it's a kind of a series of uh, horror-themed films that's coming also to the Oldham Theatre and also at the screening room. Yeah. Um, it's called God or Dog. Okay. It's made in Singapore in 1997. Uh -huh. Not a lot of people see it, yeah. but they've managed to find a copy and preserve it and restore it ah. so that the colours and everything are popping now. Right. And it's made by this guy called Hugo Ng. You'll know him on, on Channel 8 dramas. And right, all. right. But back in 1997, yeah. <laughs> He made this exploitation horror uh, mm. based on the Adrian Lim um, oh, okay. the murders. Case. Yeah, the murders. Yes, yeah. it's based on a real case. It's it's inspired by. Inspired by. Inspired okay. by. Okay. None of the people uh, resemble the thing <laughs> for legal reasons. Okay. Anyway, of course. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, there's a lot of curiosity about this film now. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. And and the rule and the legend is that he approached a bunch of respected actors to yeah. play the the role of the crazy murderous medium. Yeah. None of them. Have had the, the poor taste to accept uh -huh. because <laughs> because they thought it was really in poor taste. Yeah. So he had to do it himself. Oh, so he did it himself. So he directs and he oh, stars as wow. the the killer. Yeah. Wow, wow. There's, there's a lot of interesting killers it. now. You know, yeah. with the Ted Bundy film coming yeah, out yeah. soon. I yeah. think there seems to be that kind of interest in that as well. Right? That kind of genre interest, yeah. uh, film. In now there is a second one that mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned as well. Present perfect. Yeah. Mm. It's just, you know, in China, yeah. I didn't know this, yeah. there are people who are very famous live streamers. We've heard of live streamers yeah. on things like Twitch yep. for video games, but they're just stream live. So you get a seamstress who's working in a factory, uh -huh. she's live streaming and she's chatting. You have the construction worker who's yeah. on his construction site, he's break dancing and moonwalking. Oh, wow. uh -huh. He's live streaming, yeah. Oh, yeah. So And they is, get their fans. And this know? Is some, oh, maybe this is something like the... Um, Mukbang, where people eat something and like that, right? yeah, yeah. But it's live streaming. Live it's stream, not yeah. like this show. You know, it's not. <laughs> it's not stored on YouTube, YouTube or, anything or anything like, which is banned in China. Ah, yeah. and of course, uh, we have a short clip of uh, Present Perfect as well. So have a look. That's <laughs> What Oh, wow. So it's a very this, interesting yeah. subculture, yeah? Millions of people are into it. So it's this is kind of... It's almost bizarre, a, right? It's quite bizarre. <laughs> you know, but it's also kind of heartening because people watch real people, mm. not like make-believe super perfect Instagram models right, do it. It's right, just right. people it's watching... It's very relatable, people. I suppose. It's very relatable. Yeah, especially yeah. If, if they're doing something that is uh, relatable to the daily... Uh, person routines, as well, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, daily routines. Wow. Yeah. So those are the two of your top picks, right? That is uh, God or, or dog, dog and Present Perfect. Present Perfect. Yeah, Present Perfect is part of the CIFA Singapore International Festival, Festival of the Arts right. Program. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, your story is going to be coming out as well, uh, talking Thurs about this yes. on Thursday, right? Yes. Which is tomorrow. Which is tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So uh, make sure you catch uh, John's piece on uh, straightstimes.com with regard uh, to this uh, film festival that's happening. Once again, thank you, John, you know, for coming onto our show right here and thank sharing you. with us uh, your picks much. as well. Now, on to our last segment. It's indeed a good day for all Liverpool fans today. Uh, Liverpool produced one of the greatest comebacks in Champions League history to beat Barcelona 4-0, overturning a three-goal first-leg deficit and advancing to their second successive final with a 4-3 aggregate victory. Now, to talk more about this stunning comeback, I have with me sports correspondent Sazli Abdul Aziz. Welcome, Saz. I am too. <laughs> yeah. I'm a neutral. So, You're neutral? Okay. Yeah, I'm a Newcastle fan, but I can appreciate uh, a fantastic, a win. fantastic match. Yeah. Okay. So, Sas, I have to ask you this because you know, in on social media today, 
everyone's talking yes. about it. Yes. Why is this such a massive win? Okay, simply because mm. you know the, the odds were stacked against them. Uh, they didn't have their best player in Mo Salah, who was injured. They were up against the world's best player in, in Messi. Yep. Uh, and they were 3-0 down against uh, Europe's best team, uh, or mm. team that many regard as, as the best in Europe or even the world. So, I mean, that alone is, is already incredible, the fact that they managed to overturn this 3-0 yeah. uh, defeat from the first leg. Uh, and when you consider the fact that, I think, barely 24 hours earlier, uh, you know, they, they are also chasing the Premier League yeah. uh, title, title and, mm. they, and they lost, uh, or, or rather they lost initiative because uh, Manchester City, who are their rivals, mm. won. Uh, it took a lot of mental strength also. Yeah. So physically, uh, mentally, for them to actually pull this off, uh, that's incredible. That's why you mentioned social media. Yeah. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere you go. It's thing with yeah, this news, Even right? the two Prata places, you know, offering yeah. the, you know, four Prata Kosong, you know, yeah. I guess it's a great marketing initiative, <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess. Now, this morning's win seems to be a repeat of what happened in 2005, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, where Liverpool won the Champions League. Which one you think is more incredible? Well, I know a lot of people I've seen, like we said on yeah. social media, a lot of people are saying that, that this uh, victory trumps uh, the 2005 one. But, you know, for me, I think the miracle of, of Istanbul is still uh, more epic. Uh, mm. I think that one uh, was, you know, you basically, Liverpool fans uh, went into a game thinking, you know, oh, there's the expectation of, of winning a trophy. Yeah. They were 3-0 down, so they, they suffered the lowest of lows. Yeah. And then they came back to 3-3, they, you know, they enjoyed the highest of highs and then yeah. eventually... Uh, winning on penalties. So, mm. all that over 120, 150 minutes. Whereas this one, they lost last week. Yeah. They had some time to digest right. the defeat, you know, sort of get the permutations in their head. Yeah. And uh, it was more of like, a, oh, it's a pleasant surprise. Mm. You know, it's still obviously uh, a magnificent achievement, but yeah. it's something that I guess over a, pe a period of time, a longer yeah. period of time. So, I guess the, the impact is, is uh, less. Less yeah. that yeah. way. And Sans, you know, you mentioned yourself as well. You are a neutral person <laughs> in this. You yeah. are not a fan. Mm. But I have to ask you, what are your predictions? Will Liverpool be able to win their sixth European title? I think the momentum is, is certainly with them. Like. I think mm. when, when you beat a team uh, like Barcelona 4-0, you mm. know, with Lionel Messi in, in the team, that's bound to give you confidence and, and at this point of time, it's, it's the finishing straight uh, of the season. It's mm. been a long, hard uh, season for them. You know, we, we talk about Salah being injured, uh, yeah. Andrew Robertson is injured, but these are slight knocks. It's the will and the determination and, and the mental strength that will yeah. get them uh, through to the end. And I think uh, they have that. Plus, they, they want to avenge uh, last year's uh, defeat mm. to Real Madrid where mm. you know, they lost because of goalkeeping errors. So, yeah, I mean, um, Ajax um, and Spurs in the other semi-final, yeah. both teams are, are, are good. Yeah. But I think everything points to a, a, a Liverpool win. I hope I'm not jinxing them. <laughs> but all, all signs point to a Liverpool win. Liverpool and, winning. Okay. And honestly, they deserve to. I mean, it's, it, okay. they, you know, they've done so well. So. Yeah. And if, if I have to ask you as well, your prediction, Liverpool, who will they be going up against, you reckon, in the final? I would have to say Ajax. Like, in, in many okay. ways, you know, a lot of things... Mm point to, to the fact that they, they do well but you know it's it's a case of you know toss of the coin almost like, right yeah. right so you're saying that uh, going up against Ajax and Liverpool will win yeah I think <laughs> they will. so Liverpool <laughs> fans rejoice uh, certainly something to look forward to uh, in the finals who knows you know when if let's say Liverpool wins we'll get even more Prata probably yeah probably. I wonder how many Prata <laughs> Ek Prata, maybe. Ek Prata, yeah, that's right. Once again, thank you, Saz, you know, for coming on no to problem. the show uh, today. And uh, there we have it, our top stories for the day. For more news and videos, do log on to straightstimes.com. Once again, I'm Harianto. Join us again same time tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.